All right, Holochain explained. Holo crypto, Holo coin, what is Holochain? And this is gonna be your explanation from a software engineer after reading the white paper and taking a look at what Holochain really is all about. So this whole entire video is actually from a comment that was made by one of our family members when I did my Reef Token video. If you wanna take a look at what Reef Token is and have explained to you in a simple manner, then check that out. But the comment brought to my attention HOT or Holochain. And at that time, I did not know what Holochain was or what it was all about. And frankly, I did not have that much interest. But he did mention that recently HOT had a big pump and it's something that I should really, really look at. And since he said it so nicely, I took a look at it and am I glad that he told me about it because this is something that is completely different from what we know that is blockchains. If you're interested in hot, if you're interested in technical details being dumbed down to something that is understandable, then I encourage you to watch through this entire video because it'll help you determine whether this is an investment that is worth investing for you. Other than that, if you haven't already, please be sure to smash the like button smash the subscribe and now let's jump in hot all right so first of all we actually have to start technical and i'm gonna start with something called git which is source control for a lot of software engineers now git is agent centric and agent centric focuses on allowing end nodes or end users to share independently evolving data realities that means that we can all develop in our own paths and then merge into one main path all right did i lose you already let's dumb it down a bit let's use this example when we're building a puzzle with our family members let's say our family consists of four people now we're building a puzzle what's the easiest way to build this well each one of us just grabs a handful of puzzle pieces and we go build our separate corners of that puzzle and then at the end as we get closer to the end all those little corner pieces that section that we're making ourselves would all come together at the end with all of our other family members sections so we take our own pieces or take some pieces and we build it ourselves and at some point we all converge to one path which is the main puzzle so that's agent centric. All right, now Bitcoin on the other hand is data centric and that is its problem. It has to figure out how to choose one block of transactions amongst a variant of other transaction blocks, all from competing miners, and then committing the winning variant to the single globally shared chain. So in essence, data all comes from one node. All right, now I know that most of you did not get a single sentence of that. So let's dumb it down and go back to our puzzle piece example. Now we're building our puzzle piece again with our family. Instead of choosing sections to build ourselves and combining them to one agent centric, now dad will take one piece of the puzzle, show you the board of how this picture, how this puzzle is supposed to look like at completion. It'll show the puzzle piece to every single family member. And now the family members will go into the pile, the big pile of puzzle pieces and look where it fits. So instead of grabbing sections, we just have one big pile and everybody is just touching each other, trying to find that one piece that fits with this one single puzzle piece. So now that you know that, the difference between agent centric and data centric, which one is more efficient? Let me know in the comments below. Bitcoin being data centric results in the biggest limitation of blockchain, which is scalability. I mean, think about it. If you use the agent centric model versus the data centric model when building multiple puzzles, which one is going to be faster? Of course, agent centric. So the data centric model is not really scalable and Holochain tries to directly address the root of this data centric problem. The difference between Bitcoin and agent centric is that Bitcoin forces its miners to compete to see who gets to complete or create the next block in order to get the BTC rewards. So this is a lottery. It's completely random. And ultimately, it really depends on how powerful and how much the miners invested in the rigs that they use to mine. So while they use the word consensus in blockchain, this is not exactly fair and it's not really consensus when we're talking about the data centric model. Agent centric is different. It is something where everybody gets a say and democratically come up with with a consensus to the solution. And honestly guys, while I am reading this white paper, it was just a lot of bitching about Bitcoin. If you're wondering about Ethereum, there's not much to wonder about because Ethereum is still mining. It's not complete when it comes to Ethereum 2.0. It's staking, but there's still a lot of ETH miners mining Ethereum. So it's built in much of the same way as Bitcoin with proof of work, which means it suffers from the same scalability cost, which you can see with its high gas cost fees. All right, so what is Holochain? In Holochain, each node or user can confidently participate in the system as a whole, even though they are not constrained to maintain the same state 
as all the other nodes. Because remember, when it comes to Ethereum and Bitcoin, they all have to have the same state. Before each transaction is built or created, all the nodes that are validating the transactions have the same state, have the same copy of data. And that is enforced by how the protocol is written for Bitcoin and Ethereum or blockchain. When it comes to the puzzle piece example, it's the same state where dad shows you that one piece of the puzzle and everybody knows that puzzle and they can start working on it. But Holochain is different. So you and I, each can have our own app built on Holochain. They're different, but we commit and share our app on this thing called the distributed hash table. And every other users on the Holochain does the same. Now we can add some validation rules to the data that we commit to this table so that if that is tampered with, then we can throw out the tampered data and we can cut off the bad actor, the hacker or whatever, the person with the bad intentions from the entire system. Part of the matter is that with any of these things, it depends on everybody's trust in the system. And as we know, people have a lot of trust in Bitcoin now, but not a lot of trust in cash, which is manipulated and controlled by the central bank and the government. The fact that every decentralized application built on the hollow chain will have validation rules is incredibly important. They let users decide what rules must be followed in order for what comes out of this app to be legit. The good thing about it is it is completely decentralized. It's distributed storage with no trusted third parties and no central points. So if we take a look at history now, Parler was an app that had a lot of trouble. They actually got shut down by Amazon Web Service because they were supporting Trump and the liberals. And there were some people that didn't like that, but because Amazon was the central power, they had the power to shut them down, completely wipe out their business. In the case of the hollow chain, each agent owns an immutable hash chain and stores public data on a DHT node. So if that didn't make sense to you, let me make this simple. So this whole entire thing makes hosting much cheaper since the user is the host. And the more users or agents or people start using the app, that will give this entire DHT system more power, more hosting power and more storage becomes available. So the creator or the developer holds the source chain or what they call the DNA, which is the code that runs the app. They set the validation rules in DHT which all other apps, hosts, nodes, or whatever you call it are all connected to. They do this because when you go offline, all these other nodes that are connected to the DHT with your app on it will be able to host for you. The great thing is the validation rules. When you set those validation rules and someone tries to tamper your app, they ultimately change some of the validation rules. And when that change is submitted to all the other DHT nodes, which also has a copy of your app, they will see that something is bad. The validation rules have been tampered with and they will source where that came from. And then they will gossip about that person to all the other nodes. And in that sense, when they gossip to the other nodes, which is known as gossiping, they will just cut off the bad actor from the system. Again, Holochain is agent centric, which means that everybody has their own history. Whereas Bitcoin or blockchain forces everyone to accept one source of truth, its own history. Everything that comes out of Holochain is an app. In there, it's like each smart contract is its own blockchain. Remember, Holochain is trying to solve the problem that a lot of other crypto projects are trying to solve, which is solving the scalability problem. It also wants to give control of data and privacy back to the people, which will kill a lot of large corporations and middlemen in the process. And if you use BitTorrent anytime in the past, it is very much like that. So here's my opinion on this entire project. Note that I did not develop on this project as a software engineer because I didn't have the time. I just saw the comment to do a review on HOT, so here's my review. But my review is that if HOT and the team delivers on their promises, then Holochain will blow up. If successful, the project can kill a lot of big companies and their revenue, such as Amazon, Heroku, Google Cloud, and a lot of businesses will come in. A lot of new businesses will come in and replace them while using Holochain as the base. I like their mission a lot because in the West, privacy and security is such a hot topic. We can't trust big corporations to use our data responsibly. I mean, just look at how many times Amazon, Facebook, and Google had to stand trial and go to court. This is a movement. It's decentralizing the internet and letting the little guys, you and I, have our power back. However, I don't think that a lot of big businesses will be too happy to hear about this project because it'll literally kill their businesses. So they'll either buy out Holochain or pressure their investors, pressure investors not to invest in Holochain. And that's how actually the Winklevosses got started with Bitcoin because they had that lawsuit with Mark Zuckerberg and people didn't want to get involved with the Winklevosses because they had this bad spat with Zuckerberg, which sidelined them into trying to get into the venture mar capital market because nobody wanted them there. Because if they piss off Mark Zuckerberg, then their own businesses are in trouble. Luckily, they went out and found Bitcoin and now they're 
other BTC millionaires or billionaires. So that's it for today's video. Recently, HOT soared 109% when they released their Elemental Chat on Holoports. So they released an app on Holochain as a test. And I think a lot of people got hope from that. So it's up. Other than that, I hope you learned something from this video, from this review of Holochain. And if you haven't already, please be sure to smash the like button, smash the subscribe button. Check out these other videos on cryptocurrencies and passive income. And I'll see you guys again next time. Peace. Thank you.